G'day, Andy from Singamalt. How are you going? Today we're going to do the Spayburn um, Braden Orach. Well, I hope that's how you pronounce it. I probably slaughtered that uh, for you native Gaelic speakers, so apologies there. But um, it's a term that apparently means golden salmon or something. Um, I don't know why they chose that name. Uh, somebody clever in marketing came up with a great idea um, to call it Golden Salmon and did the translation. I'm sure it went something like that. But the um, um, the whiskey is uh, unusual in that it's a non-age statement whiskey. So that means that it has some very young whiskey, which is really fresh and vibrant, uh, and some older, I should look disparaging even as it older. Some of us are getting a little bit older, um, but it's more mature and has more complex flavors. So uh, some whiskies are aged for 10, 20, 30, 40, you know, up to 65 years. Very, very old whiskies. Now the problem with that is whiskies barrel bottled at 63% uh, straight from the still. But as it ages, the alcohol evaporates to the angels. And the longer you leave it, the lower the alcohol percentage goes. Um, starts off at 63, and each year you might lose 1% or 2%. So you might be lucky to buy a cask strength whiskey that's 60 plus percent. But chances are it's not very old. Um, and it would be very unusual to find a 10 year old whiskey which was over 60% uh, in alcohol because the angels would take little bits of it. Um, likewise, very, very ancient whiskies that are 40 plus years old tend to be relatively low in alcohol, well under the 50% because the angel share has, has gone. So anyway, coming back to this, the, um, the older the whiskey, the more mature the flavor, the younger the whiskey, the more, um, uh, the more vibrant the flavour. So this being a non-age statement has some older material, which gives it the character, and the younger material, which gives it the vibrancy. So it's the blend of old and young. So that's the, the background and the theory behind why you'd make a non-age statement whiskey. Makes a lot of sense in theory. Um, I guess the proof will be in the tasting. Um, the, um, the Spayburn um, is a very popular whiskey in the United States, um, and even this one is very popular as well. Uh, so 80% of production goes off for blending, um, and of the 20% that's bottled as a single malt, it virtually all goes into the US market. So we don't get to see much of it in, uh, in Australia. Um, more is the pity. Said some pretty big wraps over in the States. It picked up a gold at the 2011 San Francisco wine competition, which is one spirit competition, which is the toughest uh, spirit competition in the world. So big wraps for picking up the gold in that one. Um, and I guess the judges there were impressed. Um, aged in American oak, quite proudly so. Um, and um, we'll, uh, we'll have to see what it looks like. So let's give it a burl, shall we? Right, so it's a clear glass bottle showing a golden hue. Gold indicating the American oak, as we know. Um, it's actually got a quite a, it's not a dark, but it's a rich color, which color either comes from age being an age note for a long time, or it can also come from the um, the, the type of barrel. Generally, whiskies aged in American oak or refill American oak barrels would have a lighter color. So I'd say this is the first fill, which is. Enticing. Let's have a look. Mm, okay, really lifted nose straight away. Uh, 
I guess, from that younger material. Um, so citrusy as well, pear and uh, not citrusy, scratch that. Um, apples, crunchy, crunchy sort of flavor, not citrus. But uh, we're looking Granny Smith apples and pear, really good. Yeah, really nice, actually. Um, a little bit of barley sugar still in there. I get that's reminiscent and typical of um, your space sides, of course. I don't get any peat or any smokiness on the on the nose. Plenty of oak on the palate. Oh, and some real smokiness on the palate too. Oh, actually that smokiness is really nice. So I guess the secondary flavors are coming through on the palate. We get the first initial nose punch in the nose with the um, uh, with the younger flavors. But then on the palate you actually get those more secondary complex flavors coming through. It's quite intriguing actually. It makes it a very interesting whiskey. Hmm. Yeah, diff really different because because of that dichotomy of flavour, really punchy up front, and actually even in in the tasting, it was dominated by those secondary flavours and by the oak um, and the smokiness that I mentioned. But then underneath that was like a oh, like a vanilla custard almost underneath it coming up. Um, not an oaky vanilla either. It was more of a um, more of a fruity kind of a vanilla-y flavour come out, which was yeah, really, really good. Mm. I'm gonna tell you what. This is um, this is a, to get a gold medal winner at San Francisco. I can see why the judges liked it. Um, it gets panned a lot because I think it's. It's relatively an inexpensive single malt whiskey. And I think a lot of people judge it by its price rather than by how it drinks because she's not all bad. Anyway, give it a run. In my opinion, I prefer it to the 10 year old. Um, so if you like the 10 year old, uh, I think you'll really enjoy this one. If you went real fussed on the Spayburn 10 year old, might be worth giving this one a try because it's certainly a point or two ahead of it. And, uh, yeah, it drinks really well. So, give it a try. Cheers.